What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into a Monday morning episode of the Daily Juice podcast with me, Matt Peralta at Sports Talk. Matt, to follow me across all socials. This podcast being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com with the customized URL of OmahaSteaks.com slash juice. Subscriptions are available right now at OmahaSteaks.com slash juice. You get free burgers for life when you get a subscription and 10% off your first purchase with that 100% money back guarantee. Go check things out at OmahaSteaks.com slash juice. So I am hurting badly tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'm 46, about to turn 47. I'm in really good shape. I'm very proud of the effort and the work that I've put in to get in, into this level of shape. But I did something really stupid yesterday. And so I normally don't lift. I do a lot of body weight stuff. I do a lot of rucking with weight weighted vests. And I don't lift all that much. Decided to lift yesterday because the weather was such a crap day in Vegas. It was 50 and rainy and cold and nasty. And I was like, all right, I'll just go to the gym and I lift. And do the lift. And I did a seated row where you lean forward and you grab and you pull back. And on my third to last set, I thought, let's go up a little bit. Let's see what I can do. And I, as I went and grabbed the weight and I went backwards, I completely ripped my back. And I've done this before. It's not... It's not all that uncommon for me to get to throw back spasms, but when I get them, like I can't do anything. Like I can't even like I can't move the lights, <laughs> so I can't bend over. So I couldn't set up the. This is my TV setup. I couldn't set up the betting pro setup because I can't move anything. <laughs> I'm in a lot of pain, so I'm on a good good heavy dose of ibuprofen. I've got a literally I've got a heating pad going right now behind me. That's how I can sit here and do this podcast trying to keep my back as loose as possible. But that's why you're seeing what you're seeing today and why I sound a little bit more melancholy than normal because I'm in quite a bit of pain today. So um, explain, excuse me if I don't give a long and flowery explanation for why what we're betting here today. But let's recap last week. Not a good Sunday. 0-3. Got my teeth kicked in on Sunday. Favorites dominated on Sunday. And that really, I mean, the Florida total should have hit. I mean, Florida, it came up a bucket short or two and a half points short going over 155 and a half. It went, it landed at 153. Florida, the injury that, so that happened early in the game killed their offensive rebounding. So that really hurt their putback potential. And then their three point shooting was just abysmal. And yet it almost went over. We landed two and a half points shy there. So when that happened, I was like, uh-oh, Temple got killed. And then Wisconsin, just unfortunate. They lost the game by six. We laid three and a half. Illinois wins and Illinois covers. So 0-3, that put us down 2.5 units for the week after the first week, which was not good. So we, we got a pretty good hole we got to climb out of here in the month of March. So one thing to take a look at, like, so currently I'm 73 and 72 in college basketball. At one point, I was 20 games over 500 in college basketball. The more we get deeper into March, the more difficult this becomes, okay? to why I really like doing future wagers, okay? You guys are asking me about all my futures, and what do I do? We do nothing right now. Okay, if you have trailed the future, whether it be Marquette, Creighton, Arizona, North Carolina, I added Iowa State myself personally at 30 to 1 last week. But the four, the four official plays that we've got, and Tennessee, sorry, so I have six futures, sorry, five official, four, uh, five official, and six overall for me. Um, we're not going to do anything. We, we won't do anything. So when the bracket came out, like Arizona and Carolina are in the same bracket. Okay, if both those teams make the Elite Eight and they're playing each other for the Final Four, that's tremendous. That's just we don't we won't do anything. If uh, we've got Creighton in the same bracket as Tennessee, if Creighton were to play Tennessee for the chance to go to the Final Four, we wouldn't do anything. The idea is to get teams that we have futures on into the Final Four. Okay, now, like let's say the Jays did play Tennessee, right? So it's thirty to one on Creighton. And Tennessee, right? So we'd probably bet Tennessee in that game. See my point? Like, this is how we're going to play off the future wagers as we go. I don't know how many bets I'll have going into, like, everybody wants to bet heavy in the NCAA tournament. No, I, I won't be doing much of that, okay? I'll bet, okay? We'll have plays, but I'm not doing, like, more than our normal three bets. 
I'm not going to go heavy. Okay. These are very sharp numbers. This is going to be, this is the hardest time of the year to bet. As you guys have seen, once we hit the tournament, this is why I like having a portfolio because we don't do, we don't need to do very much. Okay. Now it's about sitting back and watching, let everybody else fall off the cliff, right? Let everybody else bet the favorites and let the dogs like, you know, We'll lay some over some some overs like you know Alabama Charleston that game bet it over right over one seventy one and a half bet it over okay I'll be betting it over we'll see what the number goes to but you can bet it now if you want or you can wait a couple of days numbers aren't going to move all that much okay certain games Houston right Houston game is super low bet Houston under why it's Houston bet Iowa State bet under why it's Iowa State okay there's just certain plays that we'll make. Just because we've been betting them all year, but I'm not going to overexert myself and try to get myself into a really bad situation here. I want to let the future wagers really kind of carry us through the next three weeks in college basketball. So what does that mean? Well, that puts us into a place where we're going to bet a lot more NBA and a lot more NHL. Okay, two sports I've not been great at, but let's see if we can close out the regular season decently here and then look to get into the futures market for the NBA into the NHL once we get into that. And then baseball is right around the corner and baseball is almost here. So, you know, betting early season baseball is not horrible. It can be profitable to bet it before the books have a solid read in numbers. You know, you see a couple of trends, you can jump on some trend betting in April that can be somewhat profitable. So that's the explanation. I know a bunch of you are asking like, what do I do if I have a future on? Please don't ask me that, okay? If you have a different future than what I bet, fine, I'll try to consult you. But if it's a future I have, I'll tell you what we're going to do here in this space, right here. So no need to write to me on the Discord channel. Listen or watch to the podcast, and I'll tell you when it's time to work off of the future. Until then, we're not doing anything the open weekend, okay? If Carolina loses a six, you know, 16-1, all right, we, we, we lose the bet, okay? Tennessee loses in the second round, we lose the bet. It's I'm not hedging off these positions until we get to the Sweet 16. So opening weekend-wise, literally nothing. I'm not doing anything with the futures, just FYI. So if it, if it loses, it loses. That, that, that's gambling, okay? That's just the way that it works. It's why I told you to bet one unit. If it loses, it loses. But Sweet 16, then we'll start to play off of it. Then we'll start to get aggressive, okay? The dream is that all six teams I've got futures on, they all make the Sweet 16. The reality is I'm hoping to get four to get to the Sweet 16. If I have a fourth of the Sweet 16, we can work. We got things to work on. So before we get to the picks today, it is time to tell you about the Betting Pros Bracket Optimizer. You can build a winning March Madness bracket in just seconds. Optimize your bracket using trusted sources like Ken Palm, BPI, and the most accurate bracket expert tracked by Betting Pros. Lock in your top picks. Let us optimize the rest of your bracket based on advanced stats, history, odds, and more. Quickly view key matchups info as quickly view key matchup info as you fill out your bracket. Get optimal upsets and sleeper picks based on the size of your bracket pool. To access the Bracket Optimizer, visit bettingpros.com slash bracket or download the Betting Pros app at bettingpros.com slash apps. All right, let's start with hockey. Let's talk about see Buffalo at the Seattle Kraken. The Seattle Kraken, nine consecutive first period unders. Minus 105 to a one and a half under first period bet here tonight. Now, why is that so low? You might go, Matt, man, minus 105 seems low for it. I mean, when we're doing the, you know, the, the stars over one and a half in the second period, it's minus 175. Why aren't the books adjusting to this? There's a good shot that a rookie go, a rookie's being called up that Levy is going to be in net here tonight for the Buffalo Sabres. Now, he hasn't been awful. He's been decent, but he hasn't played since Late January, it's been a month or so for him. So the Sabres called him up. He's expected to start here for the Kraken. Now, Philip Grubauer is in net for the Kraken. He's been pretty good this year with a 2.86 goals against average. Him at home has a 2.99 goals against average. He's been a pretty good goaltender here at home. He just lost 4-1 to one to Nashville in a game that happened on Saturday at home, lost 5-4 to four to the Golden Knights back on the 12th of, uh, of March for him. But Seattle's played slowly, okay? I'm going to bet the trend, but I 
totally understand where you might be like rookie goaltender. I'm not backing it, Matt. Yes, it's nine in a row, but I'm going to bet over in the first period. Let's just hope that the rookie comes out and plays well, and it's a one nothing score after one, and we go under. It's only minus 105, okay? So it's pretty cheap to bet this. I think it's worth betting the trend, betting the streak, because of the price, okay, at minus 105. If this was heavy juice, I would not recommend this, but under one and a half goals in the first period is minus 105. I don't think you can pass that up. Let's go ahead and jump on this here. Grubauer against Levy. Let's hope the rookie plays well here for Seattle and Grubauer gives up one or none to Buffalo under one and a half goals in the first period at minus 105. The total for the game is five and a half, by the way. So if you want to say, look, I'd rather bet the entire game under and not the first period under, I don't blame you at all because Buffalo is five and zero oh to the under on the road over the last five and Seattle is four and one to the under over their last five games at home. So there's absolutely a market to come in here and bet the under on the game, okay? It's five and a half, though. If it was six, I would be all in. If you guys, if we get up in the morning, if it's six, if it goes up to six, bet the under, okay? I just don't think it's going to go there. It's juiced slightly to the over at most books, either minus 112, 115, 120, somewhere in that range. Five and a half always scares me in particular with a rookie goaltender. Maybe he plays really well in the first period, but then gets lit up late. So, Or the vice versa happens. He gets lit up early because he's nervous and the Kraken take advantage. I, I, I mean, I don't... It's a tough read. So as I'm saying, it's a hard read, but let's just go one nothing after one and keep the streak alive at minus 105. But I absolutely could see an underplay. You want to bet under five and a half for the game. I don't mind that at all. The official play, though, is to ride the streak 9-0. and Let's make it go 10-0 and for the Seattle Kraken to a first period under. Minus 105, Kraken and the Sabres under one and a half goals in the first period. Okay, to the NBA we go. Let's talk about Detroit at Boston. So I went and pulled some numbers here. Okay, the total is 226 in this game. Opened at 223 and a half. It's been bet up to 226. My thought is it's going to keep on climbing. Boston averages 123.5 points per game at home. The first half team total numbers are not out at the time of taping. If you want to bet Boston first half team total over, if it's between 58 and 62, over, I like it. Okay. Detroit, when they're on the road, scoring they're not great but they score on the road about 112.7 points per game defensively look Detroit's not good right we 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 know Detroit's not good they give up a lot of points whether it be on the road or at home Detroit gives up 122.3 points per game on the road that is third worst in the NBA Boston at home gives up 108 points per game which is right around what Detroit scores on the road themselves so if we just get an average game for the celtics and an average game for the pistons this game is going to go over i like the over 226 here sorry 225 and a half here for boston and detroit i don't mind a team total over for boston in the first half i'm just not laying 16 points with the boston celtics okay boston's covered five straight games they've won five straight games by big numbers you can try to lay it if you want, but 16 just is too heavy. Boston is 19 and 14 at home ATS, but Detroit is 17 and 15 on the road ATS. Detroit just covered against Miami in their last home game. In their last road game, they covered against Miami, losing by eight as 11 point dogs. Last time they played Boston uh, was a 17 point number on the road. Boston won by six. Detroit covered. So. Not really looking to lay 16 points. They couldn't cover six, they couldn't cover 17 points. Now they're laying 16 points. Boston's won five games in a row, though. Five games in a row. By 26, 15, 16, 22, and 10. The lean on the Celtics. I like the first half team total over, but it's not available. Instead, we'll just go with the full game over 225 and a half for Boston and Detroit. And then Miami and Philadelphia. We are going to keep on hammering this here. Philadelphia, five straight games to the under. Seven and three overall to the under, and Miami is 26 and nine to the under on the year on the road. They have gone under six times in a row, eight and two to the under. The total is 211, open at 213. It's now 211 under Miami and Philadelphia. I don't care who's playing, it doesn't really matter. Both these teams are dead under teams 
when they played the last time, it was 226 and a half at Philly. Game went under by 13 and a half points. This number now is 211. Game would have fallen on that number of 211. Uh, actually, no, that would have been 213 the last time that they played. So technically would have gone over this number if they would have played. They played back on the on Christmas Day, 227 and a half. It went over by four and a half points in that game. But these teams just do not score. Philly does not score. Five straight unders. 209 and a half in their last game against Charlotte. That went under. 220 against Milwaukee. That game went under. 208 against the Knicks. That game went under. 212 against the Knicks. That went under by 60 points. And New Orleans, 222. That went under by 24 points. Again, I bet streaks like this. We're betting the streak under 211. Philly and Miami for 1.1 units. All right. Three bets for us going here. I will look to bring back player props at some point during the week, maybe tomorrow on Tuesday. We may come back with player props for the NBA, but for tonight, for a Monday, we're going with under one and a half goals, first period, Seattle and the Buffalo Sabres, uh, Celtics and the Pistons over 225 and a half, Miami and Philadelphia under 211, all for 1.1 units. Let's start this Monday off on a good start stretch good day hopefully my back feels better and we can have a more entertaining and fun podcast coming up tomorrow and by the way i did nothing on st patrick's day i was going to the gym to get ready to go and have a good time on st patrick's day it killed my whole day (laughs) so that one drink i had on the podcast yesterday was the only drink i had on st patrick's day i was happy to share it with you guys my name is matt peralt follow me across all socials at sports talk matt every morning daily news podcast i was being brought to you by omahasteaks.com 